live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit. Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Oh, is it nice out right now, but Brandon is tracking the threat for some pretty severe storms. The question is when, so we'll have that complete forecast for you coming up. But we're also following breaking news from the nation's capital right now. The Supreme Court makes a ruling on Obamacare. Here at home, a merger is in the works, a big one between two of Michigan's largest health systems. Thank you for joining us for Local 4 News at noon. I'm Rhonda Walker. We're talking about Beaumont and Spectrum Health Systems. They have signed a letter of intent to explore creating a new health system. The newly created system would operate dual headquarters in both Grand Rapids and Southfield. Grant Herms has been following this development for us this morning. Tell us all about it. Well, it's hard to underestimate just how big a deal that this is. Two of the state's largest health care providers now coming under the same umbrella. According to a release sent by both Beaumont and Spectrum Health, the companies will merge and run 22 hospitals and more than 300 outpatient clinics and facilities across the state. They'll also oversee more than 64,000 staff members. And as these companies transition, or as they're calling it, integrate, Spectrum CEO Tina Fries Decker will be the new CEO of both the new health systems. Beaumont CEO John Fox will be there as part of the transition, but will leave once it's finished. This merger also means big money. Beaumont brings in more than four and a half billion in annual revenue, and Spectrum's revenue is valued somewhere north of six billion. Both companies today outline some new principles they say will guide this new massive healthcare system. Take a listen. Beaumont Health and Spectrum Health are also both committed to the highest quality care. I'm confident that together we will raise the bar for health care across our state. This new healthcare system will have a dual headquarters set up here in Southfield as well as in Grand Rapids. Now, there are several hurdles at the state and federal level this merger has to go through. We're hoping to give you some more details today at 5. In Detroit, Grant Herms, Local 4. All right, Grant, thank you. Also breaking this noon, the Michigan Supreme, or I should say the U.S. Supreme Court strikes down the latest challenge to the Affordable Care Act, better known as Obamacare. The, this morning's ruling rejects the claim made by a group of conservative states that, well, requirement to have health insurance or pay a penalty is unconstitutional. That requirement still remains as a result of the ruling and as do other provisions in the law, including protections for people with pre-existing health conditions, a range of no-cost preventative services, and the expansion of the Medicaid program. No announcement today from Michigan Governor Whitmer on the easing of remaining COVID-19 restrictions. Yesterday, the governor hinted at a rollback in, quote, the coming days. This morning, she has and was in Detroit today for a special ceremony for Essential Worker Appreciation Day. Every day during this crisis, we counted on our essential workers to take care of the people in the greatest need. In fact, every day before the pandemic, we counted on our essential workers to take care of people in their greatest need at the time of their lives when they need it the most. And yet during the pandemic, that work became even more important, even more dangerous, even more critical to our ability to get through this pandemic as a state, as a community, as cities, as families. The work you did was important. And in addition to that, we want to get you updated on some coronavirus headlines. We expect updated coronavirus news, uh, of course, case numbers later this afternoon. But yesterday, the state reported 179 new cases, and that is the lowest single day total of coronavirus cases since last June. The state also reported four additional deaths. On the vaccine front, 60.6% .6 of people in the state have received at least one vaccine dose. Over to the University of Michigan Board of Regents. They are meeting this afternoon. This comes after dozens of people who say that they were abused by Dr. Robert Anderson call for full transparency from the university. The group says that a report from a law firm hired by the university that showed complaints against Anderson and the university's alleged failure, failure to act was not enough. They want the Board of Regents to allow a full investigation by the Attorney General's office to uncover what happened. Last week, Attorney General Dana Nessel said that a probe into the university's handling of reports can only happen if the board asks for that review. 
And it's time now to take a look at our forecast, which we have thoroughly enjoyed for the last few days, Brandon, and today included. Maybe even better because we get that heat. You know, I'm not a fan, but the humidity is down. It is just super enjoyable. 77 degrees Detroit in our metro zone, west zone Ann Arbor at 78, 78 in Adrian as well, and 75 Port Huron. Winds are out of the southwest. 5 to 15 miles an hour, a warming wind, some wispy high clouds here and there, but a lot of blue and 84 degrees this afternoon looking good. Rock and rides in Royal Oak, a new festival that is starting up today. And don't forget the sunscreen, drink lots of water. If you're going to be outside, even without the intense heat and humidity, doesn't take long to burn. Coming up, we are going to talk about a couple of rounds of strong to severe weather for your finally Friday plus Juneteenth Father's Day weekend forecast. Rhonda coming up. All right, we'll see you here in a few, Brandon. Meanwhile, new at noon, police are investigating after a 35 year old man is shot and killed in Pittsfield Township. The shooting happened on Wednesday afternoon in the parking lot of Ichiban Restaurant on Washtenaw Avenue. Investigators are telling us that the shooting was the result of a verbal dispute between the victim and two other men. Officers arrived on the scene to learn that the victim drove himself to the hospital, but that is where he later died. Witnesses say that one of the men left the parking lot in a red SUV and the other left in a silver or gold sedan. Also new this noon, the man charged in a hit and run that killed a pregnant woman in Southgate has been sentenced. 30, 31 year old Raymond Alkowicz will spend four to 15 years in prison. He is charged with failure to stop at the scene of an accident causing death. The accident happened March 13th at the intersection of Fort and Superior in Southgate. 35 year old Jessica Strouther died from her injuries. She was six months pregnant with a little girl on the way. Prosecutors say that Alkowicz was driving on a suspended license. President Biden is back at the White House after a whirlwind eight day trip to Europe, culminating with Wednesday's historic summit with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Susan McGinnis has the wrap up. Well, both leaders had positive things to say at the end of the summit, but it was also very clear that tensions remain. President Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin portraying optimism as they wrapped up talks in Geneva. Good, positive. I think there was no hostility, quite the contrary. The two leaders reaching agreement on some issues. They'll return each nation's ambassadors to their capitals and start talks on arms control. But on the biggest issues dividing the two nations, large gulfs remain. The president making clear election interference won't be tolerated and that critical U.S. infrastructure should be off limits to cyber attacks. I told President Putin my agenda is not against Russia or anyone else. It's for the American people. Putin, as expected, shrugging off the accusations. The majority of cyber attacks are made from the U.S. territory. President Biden remaining optimistic despite having no significant policy achievements to point to. I did what I came to do. Back in Washington, the president re-engaging on domestic issues with infrastructure front and center. Our focus is on a bipartisan proposal that focuses on true infrastructure and doesn't raise taxes. As a new bipartisan proposal gains steam on Capitol Hill. President Biden said the true success of the Geneva talks may not be known for many months and the timing of an infrastructure deal here in Congress still not determined. In Washington, Susan McGinnis, back to you. Susan, thank you. A bill making Juneteenth a federal holiday is one step closer to President Biden's desk. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi signing the enrolled bill this morning, surrounded by members of the Congressional Black Caucus. One last step before it heads to President Biden, who is set to sign it later today. An enrolled bill is the final copy of a bill after passing both chambers of Congress. Juneteenth marks the day that word finally reached the last enslaved people in Texas that they were free. Still to come, a new bill could change the way online companies charge, how they charge you after a free trial period. We'll tell you more about that. Also ahead, a new report reveals what caused a metro line to collapse last month in Mexico City. 
But first, health experts make a push to get more shots into arms as the Delta COVID variant continues to spread.